Yeah, this is the progress we've made so far. Um, most of that work's been in the handle itself here. We really haven't started on the pumps all too much. Uh, just kind of establish that initial curve within here. So in this part, I'm going to go further in depth on how I'm actually shaping this and kind of replicating this as well as, you know, finishing seating the head too. Uh, but a little closer look as to how far the progress we've made so far. And yep, that is a little pin knot, but I'm not really too concerned about it. As you can see, um, the grain orientation in this handle. Focus here. It's really good. Almost no run out, which is what I'd really be more concerned with. And this pin knot really does seem pretty superficial. Um, you can see it doesn't come through. Um, to the other side at all and with a little bit of shaping that I've done it it has shrunken in size already so I really don't think it goes too deep but again worst case scenario if it does ever affect the handle and it breaks you know I get a chance to make a new one all right so get back into some of the shaping so what I'd like to do before I start working on the, the rounded part of the pump so is really kind of refine the sweeps in here and kind of clean that up and clean up some of those transitions so again, kind of like I explained in the first part, what I'm doing is taking the rasp and taking kind of like a scooping motion to hollow those out. And this is a fairly fine rasp, so it does clog up uh, pretty quickly. So just clean it periodically so it keeps cutting. And I am intentionally using something that's finer, so I don't overdo it at this stage. Because, you know, going in with something like this, I'll probably take off too much. And if there's a problematic spot where I really need to remove some, I will go back to that. But uh, stick with this for a bit. So you can see we've started to define that that point where that that sweep will kind of be at its apex, and then it will round it over from there. And it doesn't need to be exact because as we round over the top, you can kind of go back and forth and define it even more. But just having a good idea of where you want to start and where you want to start that transition is is important. So for comparison, here's the other handle. So you can see that outer rid edge right there is kind of what we've got established. So I'm going to leave the top part here, but I'm going to start shaping the sides to get closer to this. Um, and really whenever I'm moving the files, I'm taking them and I'm working up towards that apex um, whenever I'm doing it. So. It's kind of working up towards the tip. If you start going down the other way, you've got a good chance of tearing out the grain. Um, and then you'll end up having to you know, laminate something out or glue it back up, but not ideal. So always work your way back up towards that apex, and you should be in pretty good shape. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the, the coarser side because I am going to be removing quite a bit of material here. So, And again, Whatever shape you're trying to make in the wood, I kind of mimic the rocking motions of my hands. So since I was trying to make a sweep in there, doing kind of sweeping motion since I'm making this rounded, you know, rocking my hands rounded. <laughs> 
So since I've done some good work on the front, I'm actually going to flip the handle around and start working on the back side too because if you notice, it's not just rounded from the front here, but also this way. So the apex of that curve is really kind of this round part right up in there. I'm not sure if you can tell from the video if it's detailed enough, but really the only portions from the old handle that we have that are still left is really this flat part right here. It might make it a little easier to see. That flat portion there, and that portion there. And as we work, we're going to slowly take those away. working up to that that peak there using the you know fine side of the shinto rasp and it, it gets to a point where even that's too coarse and then i'll switch to the um you know the fine rasp too so So you can see just a little bit of time, the progress we've made. Um, still got a little bit of a flat spot on the top here, but coming along good. Um, you can see this flat facet here. That's the original shape of the handle still. Um, so we're going to creep around from the top side and from the side here where your hand rests and make that a clean line all the way around, just like we did on here.
So you can see this is pretty much as far as I'd take it um, before kind of finishing tuning up the rest of the handle and sanding it and finishing it down because as you finishing shaping up the handle and, and sand it, you can kind of really refine that line there. Um, but this is this is uh, the progress so far. I'm very happy with it. we've made so far with shaping our handle um, not fully done yet but this is this is kind of where we're currently at on the palm swell you can see it's replicated the original one pretty nicely it's not an exact duplicate but pretty close i'm happy with how the curves are coming out um, it's still a little bit thick um, in, in you know this dimension um, I'll probably keep it fairly tall this way, um, just because I think that feels comfortable in the hand. Um, and I've got the head seated about to where I want it right now, so we've got good contact within there. Um, coming down on the shoulder nicely, so now that I've determined where that head's going to be, pretty close to where that final, final seat's going to be, I'm going to start taking some more out of this area too. Make it a bit more dramatic sweep, like I've done in here. And I think that makes it feel more comfortable when you're, when you're choking up on the, the, the axe, too, that you can get a little better purchase on it up there. And you can see earlier when I was um, kind of like sighting down the handle, I had made some, some marks on the sides here where I wanted to, you know, as I was sighting it down, is taking the pencil and just placing some marks on it so I could figure out where... I thought it was still a bit thick. So you can see the dimensions in here, that's pretty pretty much as thick as we need it to to be um, for that head to, to sit down there and for that, that space to get taken up in the eye. So all this extra weight uh, in here can be taken off. It's just extra bulk. Um, in order to make a nice flexible, you know, springy handle, I'm gonna take that out and, and thin it out a bit more. I'm going to leave a little bit of thickness um, up at the top of the handle here, um, just because I think that feels comfortable in the hand. If you get too thin, um, it, it can kind of fatigue the hand when you're trying to grip onto it too tightly. Um, so you want it to fill the hand, but not be excessively thick there. And I like to have the rest of the handle be thinner to give it that springiness or that liveliness when you're using it. So at this point, I will 
probably leave the head on it for a bit while I'm working um, working the handle down just so it's easier to to see and uh, to shape so yeah get your set back up so you can see the time lapse of it You notice I am just pounding right on the palm swell too. Um, one of the things I really like about this palm swell style is that because you know this is the area that you're you're hammering on, all that grain supported you know really well um, due to the shape. So you can put a lot of force on it and it'll really remain intact. Um, this is about the only thing that happens is the wood compresses a little bit, but you can only barely even notice that. And um. I'm hitting it pretty hard. This is, you know, black locust mallet I made. And, uh, you know, you can even hammer on it with, you know, a metal hammer, and it'll it'll hold up really well. So, one advantage of this style too. Yeah, so at this point I'm happy enough. I'm done working with the files and rasps. Uh, the method that I use for finishing it now is I'll sand with 220 on a random orbital sander and then, or sorry, 100, then 220, and then I go through and um, do some burnishing with some steel wool, um, some fine steel wool. Uh, and I've been really happy with the the finish that it gives and it just it's buttery smooth um so i know some guys don't like a, a rougher or that smooth of a finish on a axe and that's you know by all means whatever works for them um in which case if that's what you prefer just take a file and you know rough up the the palm swell a little bit but um i like that smooth i i haven't had any issues with it for the ones that i've been using so but whatever whatever works for you there's no right or wrong when it comes to something like that. So I'll get you set up where you can um, see me sand it and then we'll get to uh, burnishing. Wider angle set up on the camera here so hopefully you can see see what I got going on. But 
Is that I'm starting with uh, 100 grit and then go to the 220 and then burnish with uh, fine grit steel wool. And when I'm doing this, I do want to be very mindful that I'm not taking too much material off um, where that head was seating. I, I will touch it up and blend it in a little bit, but really not go crazy because it, it is, you know, with power tools, it is easy to go too far too quick. One of the things I'm not sure if you can tell from the, the video is when I'm using this sander, I'm using this, it's got, you know, a, like a hook and loop pad on it and the sandpaper overhangs a little bit. I'm using tilt, the sander tilted at an angle and slowly rocking it up that curve, making sure to not go over um, where I've got that rounded um, just so I don't, you know, ruin that edge that we you know took a long time to establish so just taking that sander and kind of rocking it up to that swoop So when it comes to the steel wool, I do wear gloves just because this stuff gives you really fine um, slivers, which just drive me crazy. So when I'm using the steel wool, I will throw a pair of gloves on for this. Other than that, I don't really mind the calluses. And you can see when I was sanding, I was careful not to remove too much. You can still faintly see um, that pencil line so we really didn't remove too much material when we were still doing all that sanding in here so it should still be a good fit once we actually go to do that final hang so here's our finished product so that's sanded up to 220 and then burnished with uh, fine steel wool as you can see that's a nice very nice smooth finish. That pin knot almost disappeared. Not quite, but almost. Really not too much of it left. Yeah, thin down pretty nicely so you can see the widest part is pretty much where that, that head is seating. And it's just a small, you know, small swell out here to the widest part and then thins back down the rest of the handle to where it flares out for that palm swell. You can see with our sanding and our burnishing, establish that nice edge there. And then after I finish, you know, actually hang it for that last time, I will go back through with that file again and kind of crisp up that edge. And as it used, gets used, it'll, it'll get dinged and uh, dented, but at least once I when it finishes, it'll look nice. When it gets used, it'll get some character. So, yeah. Yeah, you can see the sandals got very, very little to zero run out. So, even with some of the small pin knots. These, those will just give it character. Should work really well. Compared to the original here. See this one. It had a nice crisp edge when I when I finished, but it as it's gotten used and tossed around and used it for a little bit of splitting to get dinged up a little bit, but 
new boom character. So after I get this video together and upload it, I'll, uh, I think I'll do a part three where I'll do the final seating, hang it, and uh, let me show you how I make a wedge too. Throw it on there. So thanks for watching. Hopefully it helps someone out. If you give one of these a try yourself, I'd, uh, I'd love to see.